Hello and welcome to week six of the MMO development class. I'm Nelson, and today we are going to take a look at furthering our application, seeing about getting some challenging action going on here. What I mean by that is, let me go ahead and fire up Unity. Eventually. So we, we know that when we log into our server, which I don't actually think is running right now. Um, give me a sec. Uh, um, here we go. So if we fire up our Unity application, what we see is a lobby. Or, let me get my log set up. We were supposed to see a lo lobby. Let me see. Okay, let's join the lobby a little bit harder this time. Yeah, there we go. So here's our lobby. And so we have messages, and if more people appeared on the left-hand side, we would um, get those people uh, listed here. What I want to do is, I want the ability... This game is going to be a two-player game. And <clears throat> the idea is, is that when you join the lobby, you'll be able to challenge another player to play a game. So I'm going to basically, well, allow a player A to challenge player B, and then player B to accept or reject the challenge. This is going to be fairly straightforward to implement, mainly with the, um, the threading model that we've already put in place. If you recall, I've wrapped the lobby component inside of a registry, which um, in this particular case is guards all access to the internal components with a lock. Now, it's not the most efficient way of doing some things, uh, other things this would be uh, necessary for. In the future, I'll expand the locking model to be um, a little bit more performant, but for now, this will work for our case. And what that allows us to do is not have to worry about things such as if two uh, requests to challenge a player come in simultaneously. So fortunately for us, the way that things are written right now, that's not going to be a big concern. It will be later, of course, as everything typically is, but for right now, we don't have to worry about it. So all we need to do is extend our lobby component to handle the case for sending a challenge and rejecting a challenge and accepting a challenge. So I'm going to build this up uh, on the server first. We're going to create a few commands. Uh, first command I'm going to create is challenge player command. Now this command does not is not going to accept a response. Um, once you send a challenge, you will wait for an event indicating whether the the other player um, challenge or accepted the challenge or rejected the challenge. So inside the challenge player command, all we really need is the user ID of the opponent that we want to challenge. However, in the future, you might want to extend this if, for example, a game accepted parameters. So, for example, um, if you wanted to choose what map you wanted to challenge with, you would include it somewhere in here, depending on how the workflow went. Um, spelling, 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 spelling. Apparently my spelling is off. I hate words. Yes, my spelling is off. Challenge has an E in it. I did it in the last code base, too. Spelling is challenging. So here's our challenge player com command, and all it's going to do is start, a, well, a challenge. The next thing I need is a command to indicate if a player is challenged, we need to have that player be able to accept or reject the challenge. So I'm going to create a um, respond to challenge command, which again, is going to be a command, but without any type parameters to it. What I want to do is inside the value objects namespace is I want to create a challenge response, and it'll be accepted or rejected, and that should be good enough. So that way we can write one command to uh, deal with accept accepting or rejecting. So upon so respond to challenge command, we'll send in challenge response called response. Now, the idea is, is that we'll only be able to have one challenge accepted at a time. 
if you tr if you try to challenge a player who's already challenged, then you will get back an error indicating that that other player is already challenged. So here's our commands. Um, now the events, all we really need here is just one event for uh, challenge respond responded to event, which will implement my fancy little i event uh, interface, and it's simply going to have a um, challenge response response. So this is how the challenger will know that the challenged accepted or rejected the challenge. So it's pretty straightforward so far. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to create command handlers for our respond to challenge command and our challenge player command. And so to do that, I'm going to fire up my command handlers namespace and add a, and I completely forgot the name of those commands. Give me a sec. I just want this to be consistent. We'll create a challenge player handler, which will implement I command handler of type challenge player command. And as always, he'll accept an I session and an I application. Now the next, um, as I accidentally undo all that, the next thing we need to implement is the respond to challenge command handler. So that's going to be res 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 respond to challenge, not challenge. Although, you know what, it, that should be spelled with an A. I'm sorry. Respond to challenge handler. And I'll go ahead and get this guy a session, just in case we need him, and an application, just in case we need him. This code will be a lot more streamlined when, um, when we get some IOC action in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change... I, I don't like having my... See, the iSession comes from in Hibernate. That's our connection to the database. I always like naming this database, because a session is a name that's used in a variety of contexts, and I find that actually saying database instead of session will um, reduce a lot of confusion that might, bleh, that might come up when working with code. And in this case, I probably should have named this uh, client, but it's too late now, and I'm tired. So we need a reference to the challenge or player that issue the challenge or challenges that... No, only one challenge can be activated for a user at a time. I'm just doing that to simplify the code for right now. Just because I really want to get this over with so we can actually build some game stuff. So the next thing I'm going to do is, before I forget, I'm going to go into the rune peer and actually hook up these command handlers that I just created into the rune peer. Again, this is code that is going to go away very soon, but for right now I'm just doing it the hard way because um, introducing IOC will be a little bit complicated for some of this stuff. So, challenge command equals command as challenge player command respond to challenge command command as respond to challenge command. Again, this is some of... Uh, I don't like this code at all. Challenge command does not equal null. New. But it is easy to understand. Um, in addition, because we have so many um, instances of this huge gnarly if else chain, um, the benefit of IOC will become significantly more apparent. Because I bet everybody at this point is already fairly um, fed up with writing this code. Because I know I am. Okay, so that's all I have to do to wire these command handlers into the system. 
So now I can leave this class. Again, I, I don't really, in the future, we won't need to edit this class every time we add to command. But for now, we do. So challenge player handler. What do we got to do in this case? Well, we need to go ahead and grab the lobby. So I'm going to do application registry get uh, lobby component. And this will allow me to, this uh, will now lock the lobby so I can do whatever I want to the lobby and it'll be locked. So, how do I want to do this? I want to do something like if lobby uh, shall create challenge, or how about if not lobby create challenge uh, from session. Okay, so we need the uh, authentication. Um, we need the current user that's logged into the session. So I'm going to say um, var user ID equals session registry get auth component returning a uint. Okay, so that grabs my user ID out of the auth component and it'll throw an exception if the auth component isn't on this session, which is a good thing. Um, and the reason that's a good thing is that this code will fail if you try to um, do anything where uh, the other session isn't logged in. So I think actually what I'm going to do, so I'm going to do create challenge and then the from user ID and then the to user ID. And if we're unable to create that challenge, then I'm going to do context dot raise operation error um, user already challenged. Then, in the case that uh, an exception is thrown, well, mm, nah, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so now we have our create challenge. So the create challenge will take in two uints. The first one is going to be the challenger user ID, and the second one is going to be the challenged user ID. Spelling, oh, right. Yeah, I do love that. I, it's, it really should be there, but it's not because English is dumb. So we have our create challenge, um, which will create a challenge straightforward enough, but now we need a way to um, represent challenges so that we can keep track of who ch who's challenging who. And so the best, uh, let's think about the best data structure for that. Um, well, there's a variety of ways we can do this. I'm going to go ahead inside of components. Um, let's create a challenge object. You went challenger ID, you challenged ID. So here is our challenge, which will keep track of who's challenging who. And then we need to retrieve, so let's think about this. We need to be able to retrieve a challenge uh, given the challenger or the challenged ID. Now one of the ways we can do that is with two dictionaries, which is kind of gnarly. Um, let's think here. Eh, I'm not too worried about this code just because I want to get moving. I'll think of something better to do in the future. Um, right now I'll just go ahead and do something. What do I want to do? Any suggestions? We can do two dictionaries um, if we wanted to. Or we could just do a list and loop over the list, which is also kind of gnarly. But, okay, how about this? I'm going to do a list, private read-only list of challenges. So these are the current challenges that are active. And then I'm going to say private read-only hash set of uint users in challenges. Okay, so that way 
we'll be able to very uh, efficiently um, identify if a user is already in a challenge, and we'll be able to stop the them from challenging other people. Then we'll be able to use this list of challenge challenge objects in order to retrieve um, the list of challenges. So in create challenge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if users and challenges contains challenge user ID or users and challenge contains uh, challenger user ID, then return false because this means that one of the users is already in a challenge and they can't be challenged again. Then I'm going to instantiate a new challenge object to keep track of what's going on. So we have our challenger user ID and our challenged. Actually, I have a way better idea for this. Yeah, I have a better idea for this. I'm not going to take in a challenger user ID and a challenge user ID. I'm going to take in two iNetwork sessions. And then I'm going to create a new component that I can attach on to these different sessions called challenge component. Um, challenge component is going to take in a uint. Um, it's going to need the uh, foreign user ID, so and then it's going to need a direction as to which direction is this challenge going in. So not, not how you spell foreign? Oh, there's an E in there, isn't there? You know what? Screw foreign. Other user ID. There we go. Does this make you happy, solution? Okay, so we'll have our challenge component with an other user ID as well as a challenge direction. So the idea is, is this these components will be attached on to uh, network sessions uh, when a challenge appears, and that's how we'll keep track of it. So I'm going to go ahead and I no longer need this challenge object or this hash set. So I'm going to delete the challenge object. And then so when I create a challenge, um, I need my registry to extend my registry a little bit. I need two things. I need to get I need a method that determines if a component exists, and I need a method to remove a component. So I'm going to say public bool has t component return components contains key type of t component. And then I'll have a public void remove t component, which will do components dot remove type of t component and components dot or component locks dot remove type of t component. One more issue with my registry is that I am going to need to um, we want to enable disable components without removing. Eh, I don't know. In this particular case, I, I feel that attaching a challenge component to a user, um, it would feel more appropriate to completely remove it as opposed to disable it. But if it ever feels more appropriate to disable a component, then we can introduce that functionality if we wanted to. But right now, components are nothing more than objects that are attached onto our network sessions. They're not really all that fancy. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is I want to fix a, well, nah. It's unlikely to happen. Okay, so we have our create challenge. What is a create challenge going to do? Well, I'm going to say if challenged dot registry dot has challenge component or challenger dot registry dot has challenge component, 
then return false. Otherwise, challenged or challenger dot registry dot set new challenge component challenged registry get uh, off component ID and then the direction of this is going to be uh, challenged. I really do need to come up with a more elegant way to grab to extract the user ID from a registry. I'll probably do that at some point next week. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to do challenged registry set new challenge component challenger dot registry get auth component you and challenge direction challenger and then return true um, now we need to send an event to the challenged wait what did I I don't know what's wrong with my fingers. They just, they want to put... a thing and... yeah, whatever. I'm going to swap these two. There we go. Okay, so... Um, now we need to send an event to the challenged indicating that something has happened. So I'll do challenged.publish new... Oh, you know, I never created an event for telling the challenged that he has a challenge coming in. So let's go ahead and do that. We have our challenge responded to event, but I don't have a challenge created event. And I need the challenger. Okay, this is going to be awesome. I hate similarly named things. Um, we need the challenger's ID. So I'm going to go ahead and ext uh, alias this out into a challenger user ID. And then I'm going to publish a new challenge created event, challenger user ID. So that'll tell the other person that a challenge has been created for him. So there's our, um, so next up we ha on our challenge player handler, unfortunately this code will no longer work because, wait a sec, I got what backwards. Oh, I did get that backwards, didn't I? All right, let's inline that variable and pull out this variable. Well, no. Well, yes. No. Yes. Yep, there we go. That's right, right? All right, awesome. Isn't pair programming the best? Or this isn't like pair programming, this is like, um, I don't know what this would be called. Anyway, so let's think here. Um, the create challenge method now takes in iNetwork sessions and not IDs. So let's go ahead and uh, extract out our network session. So we already have our network session, but we need the network session for the other user. So I'm going to go ahead and say var other or challenged session equals application dot sessions. Okay, so our application does not have a way to get sessions by ID. So let's go ahead and by user ID. So let's go ahead and just kind of fudge it. All 
I swear, I'll come up with a better way to... Um, the auth component, I like the auth component, but what I don't like about it is how cumbersome it is to get to it. Which is unfortunate. Um, there we go. So it is very, um, yeah, what this really should be is there should be a dictionary of sessions. I'll put that on the list of things to do. Um, but anyway, so here's our challenged session. So to create the challenge, we need to pass in the challenger, which is just the session that was passed into our uh, handle method, as well as the challenged session, the session we're challenging. I'm going to invert this if statement. And there we go. And then again, this this code right here will throw... Well, what's spelling? Yep, there's an E again. Or an A. Challenger... No, session. There we go. Okay, so again, uh, this isn't um, particularly um, optimized. What we should really have is we should have a, a, a dictionary in the application that maps user IDs to sessions. Uh, we'll do that later once I have some time to think about how I want to refactor the auth component because I have some ideas about that, but I don't want to just sit here for like an hour just staring at the monitor living inside my head trying to figure out what I want to do with it. So I'll put it on the list of things to think about and we'll get back to that next week. For now, however, this code will work and this code will um, throw an exception if we uh, cannot, if the user tries to send in a um, user, if they try to challenge a player that doesn't exist by user ID, it'll throw an exception and if you remember, that exception will be caught by our rune peer and a fatal error will be sent back to the client, which is the behavior that I want. So, when you kind of wrap things around in nice little exceptions, uh, exception handling and stuff like that, it makes things a lot easier because then you can write code or use exceptions to say, okay, well, if they didn't pass in a correct user ID, this will throw and they'll get a fatal error. That's exactly what we want. Because if they somehow pass in an invalid user ID, this probably means they're trying to hack the um, or circumvent somehow the, the user interface that we provide to them, provided to them, which isn't a good thing. And I'm totally fine with in those instances throwing fatal errors back to the user. Okay, so here's our challenge player handler. Now we need a way to um, accept or reject a challenge. So if you recall, I already have a handler for that called respond to challenge handler. And what that's going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, get my component. So I'm going to say session dot registry get challenge component. Okay, so I now have my challenge component. Um, so let's see what I can do here. What I, well, what I could do is actually put the logic inside the component, which would probably be a better thing to do. So I'm going to say respond with command.response. Now, a response, only the person who is was challenged can get the response. So that means our direction is going to have to be, if you recall, the way I, I'm using the direction is to distinguish between the challenger and the challenged, and the direction determines what the other user is. So if our direction it equals our challenged, our challenged, then I'm going to throw a new invalid operation exception saying that cannot respond to a challenge that you created. And then what else should I do? Um, I'm actually going to change this code up a little bit. The challenge component is going to take in a iNetwork session instead of an other user ID, which is probably what I should have done. So I'm going to call this other session.
So it's now I'm going to take another session, and if I do a quick F6, it'll tell me uh, it'll tell me right where that broke. So as you see, it broke right here. So now what I can do is just say, instead of passing in the ID, I can just pass in challenged. Instead of passing the ID, I can just pass in challenger. And then I need to pass this ID into the event. Oops, my bad. So there's our refactored code. We're just passing in the iNetwork session instead of the user ID. That'll give us some more functionality. So now inside of this, what I can do in my enum. Oh. There we go. Fixed. Anyway, so now inside of my challenge component, I have a lot more functionality because I have actual references to the iNetwork session instead of just the ID. So because we've already guaranteed that there can't be two active sessions at a time, and we know that um, we can't um, do stuff and things, so let's go ahead and write code. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say other session dot publish new session challenge responded to event with the response of response. Now we need to do something interesting. We need to go ahead and say, um, we need to go back into the lobby, or we need a reference to the lobby so we can tell the lobby that we need to go ahead and um, start the game, essentially. But keep in mind that we're accessing this through the context of uh, a lock that's only going to apply to this one challenge component that's on the one network session. So what we need to do is we need to reach back into the lobby and tell them, okay, the challenge has been accepted and everything and all the stuff is good and stuff, so go ahead and start the game. Remove these two challenge components and remove these players from the lobby so they can't be challenged again while they're in a game. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and build the UI for this just so we can see some code running. And then we'll worry about the next step later. So if I go into my lobby game object, which is where I'm going to want to handle most of this code anyway. Well, I don't know. I just, I don't know why my brain puts an A in challenge. It just feels better. What I do, NATO? Okay, what events do we need? We need a oh hello. We need an I event handler for challenge created event and an I event handler for challenge responded to event. Okay, so here's our two event handlers that are going to handle um, challenges. When a challenge is created, that means that we are the challenged, and when a challenge is response responded to, that means we were the challenger. So I'm going to go ahead and create a state enumeration to indicate if we've been challenged yet. So I'm going to say enum lobby state. So what do we need? We need a lobby, or how about chat, or normal, I don't know, default. There, that's a good word. Um, challenged and, or how about yeah, default challenge is challenged is challenger. And then we also need a private uint Or how about, instead of private UN, private lobby session. Okay. So then we need our lobby state, which is going to be set to default. And then inside of the on GUI, um, 
basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this code right here and I'm going to move it into a method. Uh, default state GUI. And then I'm going to say if lobby state is in default, then do the default state GUI. Um, else if lobby state is, is challenged, is challenged state GUI. And then else if lobby state is challenger, is challenger state GUI. Okay, so we have three methods now that represent the different GUIs that we can have. Uh, what did I screw up? Oh. I'm very challenged today. Is challenger state GUI is challenged state GUI. Okay, so we now have our is challenged -er and our is challenged state GUI, and they'll just dis so if we are challenged, it'll show a accept and reject button. Uh, if we're the challenger, it'll just say waiting. So I'll go ahead and do that first. I'll say GUI dot text or label or sorry, GUI layout dot label. Waiting for res response from dot username. And then this one will be you have been challenged by and then we'll have if GUI layout dot button uh, accept do something otherwise if GUI layout dot button reject do something else and I'll actually put these in a uh, horizontal so I'll do GUI layout dot begin horizontal and horizontal. Okay, so here is our here are our two GUIs or our two different GUI methods uh, for challenging. Now, what I need to do is I need a way to initiate a challenge, and to do that, I'm going to go into my default state GUI, and I'm going to change instead of having labels for our um, sessions, I'm going to have buttons. So I'm going to have if GUI layout dot button session dot uh, value dot username then do challenge player session dot value all right so here's our challenge player method so what that's going to do is if they press that session um, on the default GUI state, then it'll invoke the challenge player method, which will send the command to challenge the player and also change the state that we're currently in so that the user can't challenge other people while they're waiting. Or more, I mean, more technically, so that the GUI won't allow a user to challenge other players while they're waiting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say lobby state equals uh, challenger, other challenge user equals challenged and then I'm going to do network manager dot instance dot dispatch new error oh derp there we go uh, dispatch a new challenge player command passing in challenged challenged ID and then I'm going to have a response. And then the response is going to be if response dot, if it's not valid, then I'm going to say lobby state, go back to default, and then 
add message challenge failed. If, however, it's successful, there's going to be a different chain of events that we're going to have to worry about. But for now, this way we'll be able to, again, I really do like the way this code turned out, by the way, um, how we can just dispatch that command, then we can check to see the response. We can reset the GUI if the, uh, if the response is not valid. Otherwise, we'll be expecting to get an, a challenge create or a challenge responded to event. So in a challenge responded to event, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say lobby state. I know this isn't complete yet. I just want to see the code working. Or what we have so far of the code working. Okay, so there's if they were if they did respond to it, as in there wasn't an actual error dispatching the command, then we'll print that out into the message. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is on the challenge created event, this will be received if we got challenged. So now I can do lobby state equals challenged. And then I can say other challenge user equals event dot challenge user ID. And then I do believe I have a dictionary set up. Yep, I have a dictionary set up. So I can just do sessions at that. Okay. So again, we're not we're, after a challenge has been created and accepted or rejected, we're not handling any code. Uh, the UI will basically become useless. Um, and we're also not accounting for things like disconnects and other things like that. So know that those things are in the forefront of my mind. I just want to get something working in the next 10 minutes um, so we can see some stuff and maybe fix some bugs that might have made their way into the code so far. So let me go ahead and do a build. I'm going to move you off to the side of the screen. I'm going to launch the editor. Let's log in with A and then let's log in with B. Okay. So now if I hit A, <laughs> waiting for a response from A, you have you were challenged by B. If I hit accept, oh, you know what? I never actually implemented those methods, did I? Derp. OK, so let's actually implement um, my accept and reject buttons. So accept is going to simply say network manager Actually, um, I am going to introduce one more GUI state, and that GUI state is going to be called waiting. The reason I'm implementing this is because when we hit accept or reject, it's not going to immediately refresh the UI to anything. Um, but we won't know if anything succeeded or failed or not at this point. So what I need to do is I need a way to blank out the UI while we're waiting for the server to process something. Now you won't notice much of a lag here because this is all local, but if this was were on the internet, we ha have to really keep in mind um, at one point in our code, could the UI hang because it hasn't re received a response from the server yet? And how do we blank out the UI so that the user can't click on 10 different buttons at once? So I'm gonna introduce a waiting state into the lobby state. And then I'm going to add it to my awesome else if. Waiting state GUI. Now, waiting state GUI, all that's going to do is say GUI layout.label stuff and things. Okay, so there's my waiting state GUI. So now what I'm going to do is um, my GUI layout button dot accept and reject. I'm going to invoke or create a method called respond to challenge challenge response dot accepted and do the same thing here rejected. And what's the respond to challenge? button going to do? Well, it's going to say lobby state equals waiting, and then it's going to say network manager instance dispatch new um, respond to challenge command, passing in my response, 
and then I'm going to do response or So network manager instance dispatch, uh, if we get a server response, then I don't know what we should do. I'm just going to go ahead and say, I don't know, lobby state equals default send message stuff. Ooh, am I saying send message or add message? Because I wanted to do add message, not send message. Hold on. You guys want to see magic trick? Um, actually, what am I doing? Okay, so that's only referenced once. Okay, never mind. I've been doing add message, not send message. Which is good, because there is a send message that I don't want to be invoking right now. Okay, so I don't know. Um, this code is in place enough to where I'll be able to test the end-to-end -end functionality of my challenges. However, um, because I'm not handling session disconnects yet, I'm going to have to log in with different users because their se network sessions, or wait a second, no, their network sessions will be recreated, so never mind, I don't have to. Derp. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's challenge A, waiting for response from A. Let's hit accept. Challenge response accepted. Now watch this. If I hit A again, I get challenge failed. The reason I'm getting challenge failed is because I'm never actually deleting the challenge component from the user. So it still thinks that A is being challenged. So that's why I can't do that. And the same should be true of B. Yep. Challenge failed. So that's exactly what I want. Okay, so now we have the UI pretty much to a state where we can... Um, we can start finishing up, wrapping up our server code. So the stuff we need to do with our server code is we need to figure out what we want to do with this respond method and how we want to reference the lobby. And we also are going to need to figure out how to handle disconnects. Now I do believe if I go into rune peer, um, on disconnect says application.destroy peer. Now what I could do is I could go ahead and have components implement an interface that allows them to um, be notified when the peer is destroyed. And then we can do something where if they have a challenge already associated with them, we can tell the user that their challenge was rejected. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go out and break, and I'll see you guys all in a few minutes. Alrighty. We have a few A's in this, so let's fix those first. Challenge user. And then I noticed I had a few of them in... Waiting for a response from challenged... Where were you? Ah, that wasn't what I wanted. Okay, there we go. And we're fixed. Alrighty, so now what we need to do is we need to handle a few different cases. We need to handle when the challenge is accepted, when it's rejected, and when a peer disconnects and they're a part of a challenge. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. If we look at our command handlers for our respond to challenge handler, we invoke the challenge components respond method. And inside this method, we publish the response to the other person that was challenged. But now, depending on the response, we need to either um, destroy the session, or destroy, well, basically, in either case, we need to destroy both of the challenge components. So we need to destroy the challenge component on ourselves and on our other network session. Now, at the current moment, there isn't any way for our... Um, network sessions to our challenge components to have knowledge of the current network session. So to resolve that, let's see what we can do. If we ex let's handle rejecting first. 
Now, I'm going to refactor this code in a moment when we do accepting challenges, but for now, let's deal with rejected. What do we need to do when there's a rejection? Well, we need to inform the other person that we've uh, rejected the challenge, and we also need to destroy the challenge component on both the challenger and the challenged. So to facilitate that, I'm going to have the challenge component receive a reference to both the uh, other session as well as our session. So now our challenge component has a reference to our current session. And that doesn't need to be a property. I can get away with this just being a uh, private field. However, because I did change the constructor, I'm going to hit F6, which will give me a nice little roadmap of the other code I'm going to have to fix. So all I need to do here is say challenger. And all I need to do is say challenged. So now we're passing the actual object, the actual session into the challenges. So the challenge components are now aware of the network session that they represent and the network session of the other object. So if we reject the challenge, we want to destroy, remove the challenge component of ourselves, and we also want to do it on the other session. And that's actually all we really need to do. For the person who was challenged, they will, uh, once they receive um, an event indicating, or the command success indicating that they have, uh, indicating that the command was successful, that they rejected the challenge, they can go back to the lobby. When our other session receives an event that the challenge was responded to and it was a rejection, they can go back into the lobby. So let's jump back into Unity and, or our Unity project and write that code down. So in the case that our challenge was responded to, if it was rejected, again, I'm not worrying about accepting challenges quite yet because that code is going to be a little bit more complicated. But for now, if the challenge was responded to and it was rejected, then we'll say they rejected your challenge. In the case that we send a rejection, so if you recall, I have the respond to challenge method here. In the case that the server response, if the server response was not valid, or it was valid and we, we sent in a rejected, then we'll go back to the default lobby state and we'll add a message to the chat log saying that we have rejected, you rejected blah's challenge. Blah being other challenge user dot username. So now I'm going to go back into the server, make sure I build it and then I'm going to back going to go back into Unity and actually test, test out my rejection code. So now we should be able to, unlike before where we could only reject a challenge once and then the server didn't reset the challenge components, now we should be able to reject challenges multiple times. So if I challenge him, I can reject it. And I said, you rejected B's challenge. Rejected, rejected your challenge. Rejected, rejected your challenge. What? Hold on. That's going to annoy me. Rejected, rejected. Why does it say rejected twice? Because I did event.response instead of um, other challenge user.username. That's why. And then I'm also going to add um, you rejected blah's challenge. Add an apostrophe S. Yes. Okay, so now that we've fixed up the grammar a little bit on our code, I'm going to jump back into Unity and get some challenging action going. So now if I challenge A, you have been challenged by B. Then if I reject it, you rejected B's challenge and A rejected your challenge. Now if, B ch if A challenges B, you have, you have been challenged by A, reject. 
be rejected your challenge, and then I can I can basically just keep on doing this all day. Now let's do one more quick test for this. I'm going to uh, build it once, build it once, and then I'm going to fire up uh, another instance of Unity. So we'll have three instances of Unity going, so that we can take a look at um, our things and stuff. So let's log in with B, let's log in with A, and let's log in with C. So now if um, C challenges B, you see you've been challenged by C waiting for a response from B, but A is unaffected. However, if I try to challenge either of these, it says challenge failed because they're currently in a challenge. Now if B um, rejects that challenge, I can go back into A and I can challenge C, for example, but now B can't challenge either A or C because they are both already in a challenge. Yet if I reject that challenge, we can go back into A and so on and so on. Uh, internationalization with all those strings. Um, I've never encountered a situation inside of Unity where I've had to do an internationalization. Um, I don't believe Unity has anything built in, but honestly, internationalization is a fairly easy thing to put together. Um, and there's tons. I'm, there's tons of C# -sharp libraries out there that'll help you along with that. So if I ever did come into a, run into a situation where I had to do internationalization, I would um, just look for a C# -sharp library which honestly would probably be better than whatever Unity provides anyway. Okay, so we have rejections going, but what about what happens when we accept a challenge? Now this is where, or because we have rejections already going, I'm going to handle another case. I'm going to handle what if one of the users um, actually um, aborts a challenge. So what we need to do is let's take a look at what happens when our session disconnects. If our session disconnects, we say application.destroy peer, and we go into here, we tell the lobby component to um, leave that peer. Now, because I consider challenges to be an aspect of the lobby, I'm going to put the logic for handling um, uh, challenge abortions inside of the leave method on the lobby. So after we've done all the lobby left event, what I need to do is I need to say if this session has or registry dot has a challenge component, then I need to do session dot. Actually, what I could do is just session dot registry dot try get. So if we already have a challenge going on, then we need to abort the challenge. Now what's abort going to do? Well all abort is going to do is say our session registry remove challenge component other session dot registry dot remove challenge component then I need to see if our direction is pointing to the challenger no, if our direction is pointing to the challenged. No, if our direction is pointing to the challenger, that means we're the challenged. And if we're the challenged, then we need to um, we need to send a response to the challenger. Otherwise, we don't really care about it. So then I'm going to say direction dot challenger. Then in this case, I'm going to say other session dot publish new challenge responded to event challenge response dot rejected. So that will go ahead and handle our um, case for when a session um, aborts the connection during a challenge. Hopefully. Maybe. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now solution. 
when we go when we vis revisit the lobby, I'm going to hand add a button for um, while I am being agile. I'm getting as much as I can implemented in the challenge and lobby system so that we can actually implement the game. Um, when we go back to the lobby to actually clean this up, I'll add a button for stopping a challenge. Okay, so waiting for response from A, if I close this, we actually don't get anything back. <laughs> you broke the server. Apparently I broke the server. But it should work the other way around. Um, Yeah, the server should break me. In Soviet Russia. Um, okay, so now if uh, if this guy leaves, notice how it says, be rejected your challenge. So that works. However, so if the person who is supposed to respond, then let's see. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create one more event called Challenge Aborted. Or, you know what, I'm going to change Challenge Response to add a, an aborted one in my Challenge Response. And then I'm going to send an aborted to um, the other session. Challenge Aborted event. Or, there we go. Now, keep in mind that the person the, uh, the the challenger that's aborting doesn't need to receive an event because he's already being disconnected, but the other session needs to be informed that the challenger was aborted. So now that I've done that, I can go back into Unity C Sharp, and then I can say, challenge responded to event. If we get a response of aborted, then I'll just say lobby state equals lobby state default. Uh, challenge was aborted. There we go. Now this should work for both uh, both ways around. So now if I close this window challenge was aborted. But if I go ahead and do it again the other way around, blah, 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 powered by Unity. Yes, I know it's powered by Unity. It, I sure hope it's powered by Unity. Um, but if I go the other way around and close this, it says challenge was aborted. So yeah, so how's everyone feeling so far about our challenging system? Or not, I guess. Full of the good feels. Well, just as long as you remain full of the good feels, I guess that's good. Okay, so... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um... And I just got NATO spun. Sorry, my brain is working a little slowly. So now that we have um, that stuff working, now we need to worry about what happens when a challenge is accepted. That's the big. That's the big thing. This is going to cause. Uh, this is going to require some thinking about it, which is why I wanted to do the rejected code first, just to get a feel for how things are working. And now I'm going to do the accepted code, which is going to quite potentially uh, share some code with the rejected side of things. But at least now we have the rejected side of things written, so we can reference the way that, that uh, those other bits of code are working. So if the challenge was accepted, stuff needs to happen. Quite a bit of stuff needs to happen. What I'm going to do is, if you think about this in sort of a DDD term, terminology. It isn't quite DDD. In fact, <laughs> in fact, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, they're probably cringing right now, but you, still, um, if you think about it in that sort of uh, mindset, I kind of consider the lobby to be the uh, aggregate root 
of this particular system. The challenge is just like an entity underneath the lobby. So if anything needs to sort of transcend multiple um, challenges and games, I want to move that logic back into the lobby. So I want the lobby to re be responsible for when a game is actually started. For right now. That might change in the future, but I don't know yet. So what I need to do is I need the lobby to contain a list of active games, which makes sense, right? And I need to be able to, when a challenge is accepted, I need to be able to instantiate a new game, inform both of the other components that they are in a game, and then block them off from any future challenges while they're in a game. So that sounds simple enough, right? However, I will need a reference to the application. Now, does anybody know why I'm getting a reference to the application in my challenge component as opposed to a reference to the lobby? Well, to answer my own question, the reason is, is our synchronization logic is handled through the registry. Now, this is starting to kind of not look as good as it used to, so we'll think about how we can move that around later. But for now, what we can do is we can simply pass in the application to our um, challenge components so that they can request an instance of the lobby to, um, ensuring that it's properly uh, synchronized and then have the lobby re be responsible for instantiating a new game. However, to get a reference to the application inside of the challenge component, our lobby component itself is going to need a reference to the application. So that's easy enough to do. I'm going to add I application to the constructor. Now in a perfect world this would all be injected but we don't live in a perfect world. So what I'm going to do instead is hit F6 to see what code broke because I changed that constructor. And fortunately, we only have one bit that broke. That was this bit, and fortunately, this bit does indeed have a reference to the application that we can thread through to our lobby component. So now we've threaded the, the application through to our lobby component. I can now pass the application into our challenge components and then use that application reference to get an instance of the lobby. And by doing that, I can now say lobby dot accept challenge passing in this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn our session into a property. So I'm going to say, um, remember how I said at first it wasn't going to be a property, but then, or it was going to be a property, then I decided it was going to be a private field. Well, I'm not, now I'm deciding that's going to be a property. So I'm going to encapsulate field, hit Alt A and Enter to turn it into an auto property, and then sort it properly with our other properties. Wow, that was a lot of words. But anyway, so now our session and other session are properties so that our lobby can access them. So that's all fun stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and implement the accept challenge method. And it's just going to take in a challenge. OK, so what's the accept challenge method going to do? Well, it's going to, um, first of all, it's going to remove both the challenge components from the sessions. Then it's going to add them to a game. And then it's going to add them to a hash set that will blacklist those sessions. Well, it'll mark those sessions as being in-game. And then it's going to send events to everybody else telling that these other sessions are in a game. And yeah, that should be about it. So I'm going to need a game object. So inside of my components namespace, I don't know where else to put this right now, I'm going to create a rune game class. And this is going to be a game. And it's going to contain the logic for the game. It's going to take in an I enumerable of I network sessions called sessions. So straightforward enough. Now our lobby is going to have a list of the currently active games. As well as a private read-only hash set of I net or of I yeah, I network sessions called um, sessions in game. Now we're going to instantiate both this and this. Now when a session goes into a game, it's going to go in this hash set. 
Um, when the session leaves the game, it's going to be removed from the hash set. And then when we create a challenge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if sessions in game contains challenger or sessions in game contains challenged or registry has challenge blah blah blah. Okay, so that should be pretty straightforward. Now what's our accept challenge going to do? Well first of all it's going to add our challenge our session to our sessions in game as well as challenge other session. Then it's going to create a new game, passing in an I enumerable of I network sessions, which I'll just pass in an array of challenge our session, challenge other session. So that'll create the game. Next, I need to inform everybody that these two sessions are now in a game, and then I need to inform those sessions themselves that they are now in a game. So actually, the easiest way to do that would be just to create one event called game started, which will tell these guys that they need to switch over to the game view, and it'll tell everybody else that these sessions are currently in a game and can't be challenged anymore. So that seems like the most elegant way to handle this. So I'm going to create an event called, um, blah, blah, I don't know, session join game event, which is going to implement I event, and take in a user ID. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop over, over, wow, over all of the sessions in the lobby. And I'm going to say session, session, not sessions, dot publish new session joined game event, passing in session. Ah, I really need to fix this auth component. It's getting on my nerves. Okay, and the last thing I need to do is do games.addGame, and then I need to remove the challenge component from both of the objects. So I need to do challenge.rsession.registry.remove challenge component, challenge.othersession.registry.remove challenge component. Now let's take a look at our code and see if we can't make this a little bit cleaner. If I look at the challenge component, we already have code that removes itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a public void dest destroy. And destroy is going to destroy the um, uh, challenge component on both our session and the other session. So in that way, what I can do now is instead of repeating this code, I can just do challenge.destroy. And then I can go ahead and make this a single line lambda, uh, get rid of these ext extraneous curlies, and I think we're good to go. Uh, the last thing I kind of want to do is um, session sub. Oh wow! Nobody caught this. This is probably the <laughs> this is probably the horribly most broken um, for each loop I've ever written, and nobody nobody caught it. Uh, destroy and abort. Oh yeah. Let's do that. Anyway, I'm surprised nobody caught this for each loop. Look what this for each loop is doing. It's looping through all the sessions and telling them that um, they joined a game. I can't believe any nobody noticed that. Well, at least I caught it. Um, yeah, yeah, you. I guess everyone joins a game when one person does. Uh, let's just fix this up. Um, instead of session joined game event, I'm going to rename this to sessions joined game event, and it's going to take in an I enumerable of user IDs. And then I'm going to 
turn this into an arm. Network sessions, sessions in game, uh, user IDs in game equals sessions in game dot select registry get auth component un ID to list. And you know what, I can alias this, this out as well. Our uh, sessions joined event. I can move you out of here, and then I can go ahead and inline you. And there we go. That looks good, right? Okay, um, yeah, so now I'm going to go ahead and build this, build succeeded, I'm going to jump back into Unity, and I now need to handle an event called Sessions Joined Game Event, and this is going to do one of two things. If either of these sessions are us, then we need to switch over to the uh, game object. Why do you have session in game and sessions in game? Uh, what I do wrong? Sessions in game. Oh, sessions in game. Uh, I added um, that to the check for a create challenge. You can't challenge a user who's in a game. Does that make sense? Do I need the local though? What do you mean, the local? Yeah, I know. Um, in this case, I'm having that data, or what? In the next line under... Oh, this, um, this session's in game. The reason I aliased this out into a local variable was because I reuse it. Because this, uh... geez, you guys are so demanding. There you go. Okay. that makes everyone happy. Jeez, I'm just trying to please everyone and uh, whatever. You know, I knew a guy who used to write variable names and method names like this all the time. It was kind of funny, but also very annoying. All right, let's go ahead and recompile this. Although the logic, I'm just going to recompile this just for a solution so that the metadata contains the proper spelling. Okay, so um, now our sessions joined game. So we need to check to see um, var is us equals event dot user IDs uh, contains. Uh, we don't track our user ID, do we? All right, let's go ahead and track our user ID. So to track our user ID, I need to go back into the login game object because he gets the user ID um, when the oh no the game manager does because game manager gets join lobby event which does not contain the user ID. The user ID is sent only as a response. Yeah. Okay, so we need to get our user ID out. Yeah. 
aManager.instance. response response ID. Oh, what are you complaining about? Ambiguous reference. Oh, shut up. Okay, so now our game manager will keep track of our user ID for us. Our register command doesn't give back a response of the ID. Oh, you know what? I never had the register command implement I command of register response. So let me go ahead and fix that. I'm going to jump back into my register command and I'm going to have him implement I command of register response. By making that one change, that will be due to the awesome state of um, generic type inference, it'll magically make this code work. So now we have our user ID. So now I'm going to say if I'm going to remove that field because now that's being handled by our game manager instance user ID. So is us. If it is us, then we need to switch over into a game state. Otherwise, we need to go through. Um, so for each bar user ID and event dot user IDs sessions at user ID dot in game equals true. So I'm going to add an in game. Oh, shut up. Uh, it's not going to let me do it, is it? Uh... Oh, right, because our session objects are not um, our lobby sessions, which are retrieved from our base. Ah, uh, whatever. I'm just just because we're short on time. I'm going to do a private hash set of you and sessions in game. Don't hate me for this. I promise I'll make it right later. Okay, so I'll use that little um, sessions in game to change what, how we display the player in the lobby. So I'm going to say if sessions in game dot contains, or hold on, this if statement is going to have to be a little bit more complicated. If sessions in game contains session dot id value dot id, otherwise, now unfortunately I have to use curlies for this because otherwise things are going to get all gnarly. Otherwise, I'm just going to say GUI layout dot label session value username. There we go. So if we're in the if we're in a game that goes from a button to a text field. Now the last thing I need to do is right here. If we joined a game, we need to switch out of the lobby game object and into our um, game game object. So I'm going to create a game game object. Actually, no. I'm going to say if not is us, then return. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that. Ah, I can just inline this, can I? There we go. Okay, I'm telling you why. I'll tell you why I'm doing this. I'm actually going to also handle the session join game event inside my game manager just to keep things consistent because the game manager is kind of orchestrating everything just so that our lobby doesn't really have to care about the implementation of how we join a game. And then what I can do is if event user ID contains user ID, if not, then we switch into the, uh, the lobby game object. So if we look at the uh, lobby game object, currently we don't hold the lobby game object in a field, but I'm going to change that. I'm going to turn this into a field by hitting introduce field, and I'm going to turn it into uh, lobby go. And so now we have a lobby game object field. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to deactivate it. So lobby, lobby go active equals false. Oh, what are you complaining about? It's obsolete. Game object dot active. You're obsolete too. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and guess what? You have no setter. Wow. Okay, let's do game object dot. Set active. For some reason, um, yeah, and I just got some help through Skype, but for some reason I'm not seeing a... Maybe I'm having some uh, Unity Engine game object dots... It's a method. Am I not in a mono behavior? I am in a mono behavior. Oh, it's a method on the actual... Derp. Ah, thank you, Justin. For some reason, when I saw game object I said active, I thought uh, it meant um, there was a static method on the game object class, which some things are, like object dot destroy and stuff. But it's an actual method on the actual game object, which is for the first time something that makes sense in Unity. Okay. Anyway, so we've deactivated our lobby game object, so our UI will no longer appear. And yes, you did hear Luma in the background. Um. What am I doing? I now need a game game object. Game go. Inherits from mono behavior. Um, this is also going to be handling events. So I'm going to refresh my memory on how I exactly did that. Uh, if I go into my lobby game object, we have a awake where we say register event handlers and destroy where we unregister event handlers. So that's important because Although our lobby game object is inactive, so it won't show the UI, it should be still receiving events from the um, from the server, which is the behavior that we want. Okay. So there we go. If we received a sessions join game event and it's us, then we want to go ahead and um, disable the lobby, instantiate a new game object, and add the component. Now what I'm going to do next, or probably the week after next week, because next week I'm going to be mostly in Unity actually doing real game development, but I'm going to write the code in such a way that we won't need a server to actually test the game logic, which is very important when writing games like this. Um, but uh, when we do get back to running through this code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sending events after they've, the user's been notified that they've joined a the game. I'm going to be sending events just to those users to tell them, okay, so we've created a game board, here are the runes, here's the other player that's in the, the game, and all that fun stuff. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to the server and make sure it's built, and it is. Jump over into Unity, do a build. Do a build harder. There we go. Launch another instance. Log in with A. Log in with B. Log in with C. And great. I got the logic backwards for um I didn't know many Are you guys asleep or something? Because I th do believe I got that hash set check backwards. There we go. If not sessions in game contains. That's what I wanted. Alright. 
do a build, and let's see what kind of crazy challenge accepting logic we get. You're on Facebook when in class? That's not good. Though I am too, so... Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to challenge him. Now let's watch what happens to the UI. I'm going to accept, and we both get in the game, and nothing happens over here. So, <laughs> I'm going to... Um, why did nothing happen over there? Okay, I'm not getting any errors, which is good. So, let's see what the problem is. If I go into the lobby game object, and I check the... Um, sessions joined game event handler, which is right down here. I'm going to say if... Oh, this is backwards. It's supposed to be if event.userids.contains user ID. Derp. Okay, so let's jump back into here, do a build. And this should actually work this time. Do a build harder. Now it should work. Of course, by saying it should work, it's probably not going to. Okay, so I'm going to challenge A. I'm going to accept the challenge and take a look at that. A and B are both notified, uh, or both notify the client that they're in a game. Even if I hadn't done that and you tried to challenge them, you'd still get an error, which is good. So now I can go ahead and leave the lobby and leave the lobby. So now we have a fairly solid implementation of challenging. Uh, the only real feature that's missing is the ability to abort a challenge from the challenger, but I'm not going to worry about that yet because we don't have time to do it, and tomorrow I want to actually focus on building the game UI inside of Unity, which, like I said before, is we're going to be spending most of the time in Unity um, just building out the mechanics and everything like that, and then we'll hook it up into the networking code. Alrighty, so how's everyone doing? Are things making more sense to people, at least the, the way in which I'm structuring the code? There's a couple things that I don't like, but I've already been you know pretty vocal about it. Honestly, if I, if I sat here and fixed everything that I didn't like about what we have so far, we wouldn't go forward. That being said, when we do encounter a problem, uh, which I know we will in the future, we'll address that when it comes up. But next week, we're going to be playing around with the client. And so that should be a nice little break from all this server stuff. So I don't think we have any more time to implement um, anything else in the few minutes that we have left. And we have already covered quite a bit of new code being written. I mean, if I check my thingy. So I think... That's going to be about wrapping everything up. So, goodbye, future people.